Hello Bagang, welcome back to a brand new episode of Elden Ring. Link to the previous episode at the top right hand of your screen where we fought the Red Wolf of Radagon. And we also went to Faroth, uh, Fort Faroth where we died so many times in search of the Radagon Sosil, but we were able to get it in the very end. So, the Radagon... The Red Wolf of Radogon, as I, as I had explained in the previous episode, was given to protect uh, Renala from invaders. And it also serves as the mini-boss for the Academy of Rhea, Lucaria, as well. So, what are we going to be doing in this episode? In this episode, we shall be completing the second half of... Uh, Shall we complete the second half of Rhea Lucaria? I did complete one half in the previous episode along with uh, getting some juicy upgrade materials and upgrading our golden hellbird as well. So the gold we have the golden hellbird and we have the bloodhound's fang which we currently have. So those are two of the five weapons that I shall be interchanging in my character depending on the situation because if nothing else i am very versatile when it comes to shifting the advantage to my favor so as for now we do not need to use the golden hellbird because there is no need for me to use it as of now but we shall be using it at some point so uh what i want is to electrify my armament as per usual and then from this point we shall be going inside here now i'm gonna remove the beast repelling torch because there we have no use for it in this entire academy so in this single episode we shall clear out the remaining half of the real lucarian academy we shall also be dealing with the boss of this academy the demigod herself renala queen of the full moon and leader of the academy of Rhea Lucaria as well as the Carian Royal Manor. Anyway, this is Radagon's icon. It's another important item for the Platinum Achievement. Anyway, take that guy out. Take this guy out. Dude literally hit me with a book. It's insane. But yeah get this golden rune and then we are going to go back to schoolhouse classroom the only thing we needed to do was to just do that to be honest nothing else was pretty important for us to do at that point we just had it we just had to go pick up that talisman and then that was it oh no no no, no. this is not where i want to be uh debate parlor yeah this is where we're supposed to go to can't believe I said we are going to the uh, classroom. We shall be coming back to the classroom, but much, much later in the game because um, what we shall be looking for in the classroom is not uh, readily available to me as of yet. You know, just making sure that you are not patrolling because you know, patrolling is horrific. It's not something you'd like to be doing ever too often. Now, we're gonna come to this center ornamental piece if i can actually get on top there we go and then we're gonna jump up again and then around here we're gonna pick up this wonderful stone sword key excellent now there are enemies here there are crabs as long as they're not attacking us there's really no point in us also being aggressive on them so we're gonna jump on this platform run across jump and jump and then they're gonna see a giant ball the same as the ones we were escaping in Kaelid, they're gonna be spawned. Now these balls move from side to side, so I'm gonna wait for that one to leave. And depending on the side it is on, you want to go on to the opposite side. Essentially, I'm gonna pick this up. And I'm watching where it's going. Oh god. I did not time that correctly. <laughs> anyway. Despite taking that damage, it's not the worst thing in the world. So I'm gonna electrify my armament. I have done a double heal by mistake, but it's okay. It's not gonna bother me too much. We're gonna be fighting this dude. 
as he is the guardian to Renala. So what Radagan did was he placed the red wolf and he also placed this guy now. I am purposefully not I'm purposefully not uh, going for a light attack because this guy can actually parry you. And it's always very scary when he parries. The same way you guys saw me parry uh what's his face? The Crucible Knight a few episodes ago. That's how he can parry you and lead to and cause you a lot of damage and demise. But then we get the carrier knight shield out of this and now this place goes to the main boss. But we are not done with the Academy of Real Lucaria. Still have some things to find. We still have a quest line to do as well. So that's what I'm gonna go take care of right now. That teleporter takes us to the Church of Vows. The Church of Vows is where our turtle friend, the Pope, is at. Uh, we are going to have to open this door, but it cannot be opened from the current side we are in. So, just gonna go this way. Gonna turn right, beat this guy up. Beat up that guy as well. Pick up the golden drone for... Okay, these guys have witnessed it. I don't like leaving witnesses to my aggrievousness, so we're gonna take them out. And then, just like that phantom dude has done, we're gonna try jump across. There we go. Now, I'm gonna open this door, just in case things become problematic, we'll have a shortcut to get to where we are right now. I'm gonna electrify the armament once more. Heal up, and then we're gonna go stop the guys responsible for the balls uh, coming down the stairs so that the next time which we are, when you are going to face Renala we can do it peacefully so these dudes are very responsible for it as you can see it's very pr it's a very problematic place So right now I have rolled down and I'm hopeful that it doesn't lead to any of my demise because having to deal with these guys is gonna be a bit problematic. But yeah, I'm gonna try to climb back up and beat them all. Oh god. Oh god. Alright, so I'm just gonna have to go back down. I think I'll have to face them all down here. It's probably going to be for my own benefit. Okay. I would like you guys to know that I've actually butchered this. So I'm just gonna... I'm not gonna let it go. I'm just gonna chill out a bit so that I can let them come down. I'm pretty sure they will eventually come down. Yeah, as you guys can see. So take both of them out. Now the only person left is for us to deal with the pumpkin head who hasn't yet dropped down. But I hope he will drop down very very soon so that I can get this out of the way. Okay. So I'm just gonna bait him. He's, he's bound to drop down eventually. There we go. And then I'm gonna jump, go up. So we're gonna go open this chest up. And then I'm gonna pick up this scarab helmet, the greenstone scarab that is. Now I'm pretty sure if I leave any one of these alive, the balls will still spawn. So I'm gonna need to take out the pumpkin head as well. So I'm gonna jump down with a charged heavy attack. There we go. Get the sanctuary stone for our troubles, and that's the pumpkin head uh, expertly taken care of by me. As you guys just saw. Now, 
we don't have much left to do except for going on to the rooftop so as you guys can see from now on there will be no ball spawning whenever we decide to come back here as we go to face Renala. so now i'm just gonna take care of the last remaining aspects of the academy and then we can go after Renala. so the last remaining aspects are not that hard and they're not much to be honest we just have to clear out the courtyard clear out the rooftops and that's it so we're gonna go start off with the roof i'm gonna start off with the rooftops before i think it's easier that way start off with the rooftops respawn at the debate parlor clear out the courtyard as you go to face renala you know? so take you out take you out right uh take you out and it's not even important to take out all of these people because in any case they're gonna respawn anyway but i like doing it once just as part of me trying to um show that i i care i actually give a damn so i'm gonna be a bit thorough in everything i do and take you out take you out take you out uh, Q out. Okay, now there's this uh, wizard over here. Take you out. And then I'm gonna roll through. Um, I think right there. We're gonna pick this up. It's the greenstone wet blade. It's basically for putting magical ashes on. No, ashes of war here. Yeah, on magical items, basically speaking. Anyway. Uh, let's see if we could go up here first take down this guy and then take out his stooges get the golden rune and the rune fragment and then before we jump uh, all the way down we shall go back uh, now let's first go down and take care of these guys out here now this is the courtyard but we, sh we won't be doing anything of importance in the courtyard as of now we still have uh, quite a bit. I still, I still stand, stand. Sorry, I still stand by my stance that it's better to uh, deal with the rooftop first before you deal with the courtyard. But it, in in retrospect, um, I will say that the courtyard has less is less problematic to deal with. But at the same time, if I'm running straight towards Renala, I think it would be better for me to deal with the least problematic aspect like deal with it on the way to Renal. I don't know, that's, that's just my thinking, so. Anyway, this guy normally tries to headbutt you, so you know, make sure he doesn't. And yeah, and then I'm gonna pick this up, the Golden Rune 3. Um, just making sure there is not, yeah, I'm gonna go back down here. Yeah. Yeah. This is why you always check, by the way. I'm gonna go open this door now. This door opens up to the courtyard, as you guys can see. So if, um, for any stupid reason we die the debate parlor grace is like right there so if for any stupid reason we die we'll just simply run enter through that door it's gonna be a shortcut and it's gonna lead us all the way up here it's gonna be a very nice shortcut basically speaking it's gonna lead us now all the way up here like straight on without having to deal with a lot of uh, distractions anyway so i'm gonna jump over this and now we're gonna start tackling the rooftop section so the rooftops are essentially uh, fully guarded by marionettes and abianettes you find nothing else on the rooftops of the academy so these are the marionettes of course you guys know the drill you hit them once they malfunction so it's best to hit them before they malfunction like that that one was about to malfunction and once they malfunction they start uh, firing arrows at a pretty ridiculous rate but now that that's out of the way we're gonna go around pick this golden rune 4 up and then i'm gonna go back pick this up not so sure what we have left we give it gives us five arrows i mean sure and then now we're gonna go up this ladder so couple of things i'm trying to see what we'll have in store and yeah you just have to go up this ladder 
and moving up this ladder will give us the opening to the next parts of the rooftops now there are we've beaten the marionettes down below and now up here we're gonna be fighting the avionettes the avionettes are kind of like the marionettes but smaller essentially so we're gonna take the i'm not gonna use the case of ducks i'm gonna use the throwing dagger so they have some avionettes sitting on the roof and i'm gonna start throwing the throwing daggers at them it's just to get them down here so that i can beat them up essentially speaking as you guys can see they are also malfunctioning and whenever they do this malfunctioning spin if you're not careful they can do a lot of damage to you and anyway, that's one abianet down there is also another sorcerer down there so the whole premise is you normally run here without any care in the world and all of a sudden you are being ambushed by two abianets not really not two three because you've killed one here but you're getting ambushed by three abianets and a sorcerer and it's not pretty anyway, i'm gonna let that abianet malfunction its way towards me oh god oh god oh god okay okay we fell but we did not die and the other avionet fell down so we won't even have to deal with it which is pretty cool anyway uh, this guy has the spiral attack i'm just gonna take him out but i don't have to deal with him and now we only have to deal with one more avionet awesome just gonna hit it before it malfunctions there we go gonna pick this up some more crystal darts now the crystal darts i'm basically saving them for when we go to catacombs and we have to deal with alt ad tree barrier watchdogs they really malfunction when they have to be faced with crystal darts and we get the meteor bolt as well and now we are gonna drop one and then you're gonna drop a second time and then you're gonna try to make the jump across the other side as you guys can see there are, there is a lot of blood spots around because people have been trying to make this jump and it's a very makeable jump by the way as we make it to the other side it's just that you need to be pretty careful with it so just like we did in the volcano man i'm gonna strip naked again and that should allow us to be light enough to make this jump a bit easier so there we go i'm gonna hold jump i'm gonna jump hold sprint and jump and we did not make it god damn it god freaking damn it it happened again i don't know like every single time i've played elden ring and i've tried to make that jump i always fail on the first try and exceptionally make that jump on the second i don't know what it is but it always happens anyway we are gonna have to uh, re-equip our stuff i'm gonna have to sort this chest out by the way because i'm having to scroll a lot before i reach my desired stuff but yeah, i'm gonna have to do that and then we're gonna place our robes back on we're gonna put on our gloves back on and then we're gonna put on our uh leggings good so and i'm gonna put on the sacrificial twig as you guys know it uh, if you are to s die for a stupid reason right now uh it's only the sacrificial twig that would be lost and not the runes that we had accrued up to the point when we died so again that's how i normally use the sacrificial twig it's like an insurance policy to allow me the opportunity to at least uh get close to the runes that i had initially lost but now since we died and we're back here we might as well clear the courtyard so we have these abductor virgins as you guys know the they are the ones which also took us to the volcano manor and as you guys saw when you evade their arms and then you land a heavy attack on them it's pretty devastating the damage you can do to them anyway 
that without a bacter virgin taken care of it won't respawn once more so we won't have to deal with it basically won't have to deal with it again so i'm just gonna run around we're gonna pick up the greenstone firefly and then right here we're gonna pick up this golden seed and after picking up the golden seed we are gonna run this way as you guys can see th there are some other player markers left for us so yeah we're just gonna run this way and we're gonna take this guy out and then right here we're gonna fight this uh, shiny crab and we're gonna get another mask now these masks that you're picking up are very important for a puzzle tower there is something you're gonna have to do for that puzzle tower to unlock so you don't need a specific mask you just need one of those masks that look like what these wizards are wearing you can either get the blue one the green one or even the one which has two faces it really doesn't matter which one you pick so long as you just have one of them it fulfills the purpose of that anyway a crab we're gonna fight it now this crab is spewing purple gas which is sleep and yeah as you can see that purple gas definitely just simply takes you to sleep it does nothing else to be honest but yeah i'm gonna pick this up and ladies and gentlemen we are done with the courtyard as you can see if i had not died at the rooftop it would have made sense as to why i was saving the courtyard for me going straight to the boss it's a really pointless part of it's really not hard to clear up the courtyard to be honest Anyway, uh, I'm looking for the door that we opened as an insurance policy for ourselves in case we died. I'm just gonna take these guys out. Uh, that door should be here somewhere. Now ah, there it is. So yeah, as I said, now this is just take us straight back up to where we jumped to go to the roof. But yeah, the mask which you are picking up is pretty much similar to what these guys are wearing and we are going to need it to uh, fulfill the conditions for a tower. Anyway, I'm going to replace this throwing darts because we are going to be dealing with some uh, abianets again like we did the last time. So it's best that I have them out and ready. Anyway, I'm going to enchant my armament, my armament once more again and then we're gonna have to fight these dudes again remember you have it's best to stop them from malfunctioning and taking out their rage on you Alright, so we're gonna climb up this ladder once more. And then we're gonna get our cuckoo blades and throw it at that dude. It's gonna malfunction his way towards us. And you don't have to fight them, you could run away, but the other nets will follow you to where you're going because. Uh, Spoiler a lot they can't fly it's something to keep in mind all right i'm gonna throw this to the next one yeah, i need it to come down all right it's come down so i'm gonna take it out now we only have to deal with the wizard. But I'm trying to... Okay, that one hits the wizard and... This one will hit the abianet. Now I can simply deal with both of them as I make my way towards where I want to go. Okay, one of the abianet has fallen to its death, so... That makes it way easier for me. Okay, take out that wizard. 
then we're now gonna go back and drop down to where we were and hopefully this time i'm actually gonna make the jump yeah if you guys thought i was not gonna try again you are mistaken we have to make that jump so we pick up our runes once more so now we're gonna strip naked again and this time i'm gonna remove pretty much almost everything right so we're gonna jump hold the o zero o button or the b button depending on your control and then run and jump and this time we made it and it it happens quite too regularly toward for me anyway that whenever i try to uh what's it called like whenever i try to I try to make this jump on the first try, I fail miserably. And then when I try it on the second try, it's like the easiest thing in the world. And anyway, just putting on my confessor attire. Uh, I'm gonna be placing uh, some of the... I'm gonna be placing the other aspects and then I'm gonna leave... Right, so dealing with this uh, marionettes, and I'm just checking on the. Okay, I have not placed my my seal, my faith seal. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. There we go. Excellent. So I'm now gonna electrify the armament. And then you are now simply gonna go around. Uh, make that jump that we made was the hardest jump. There are no more hard jumps left, so it shouldn't be an issue. So I'm gonna jump down. We're gonna take more out. We're gonna take out all marionettes on the roof. And we're done. So again. I'm gonna just do the safest jump I can. Jump, hold uh, that sprint button, run and jump. And then we're gonna go in here. Get attacked by two of these, but we're gonna do the shift direction type of attack and take them both out immediately. Right, now I'm gonna pop another runak. As I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna die from this point on. So we make our way up the world's one of well not the world's longest ladder but one of the longest ladders in the game. Yeah, there are a couple of really long ladders. Like if you guys can remember we need Stormville after we fought the serrated tree spirit, we literally had to ascend a seriously long ladder. But yeah, this one is also right up there. It's not as long as that one in Stormville, but you know a long ladder is a long ladder. Anyway, I'm gonna pick this up, it's another bow the full moon crossbow and then we're now gonna figure out our next step which i believe is through this point right so we're gonna run and then we're gonna go pick up that uh upgrade material right over there there we go and then uh no that uh, that seems like a too risk too risky a jump to make. Um, I'm just trying to figure out which rooftop is best. I think we just simply descend as we are. Uh, there is no roof over there. So we're gonna jump down. Yeah, there's a roof down here. And this is back to where we started. But instead of making that insanely weird jump, we're gonna just simply descend like dudes who've actually learned their lesson so jump down and then jump down again just checking yeah jump down again and then we're gonna take out this marionette marionette taken care of we're gonna go take care of the next marionette next marionette taken care of jump up this roof pick up this upgrade material another round four and then we shall be headed back so
so now the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna drop down so we're gonna drop down towards our right there we go and then I'm just gonna go around and make sure there is something nothing that we have missed before we proceed on forward just moving around okay there's nothing nothing missed so there's no issue then you're just gonna jump and then you're gonna go pick up another imbued sword key if you guys remember these are the ones we used to go back all the way to the chapel of anticipation uh two or three three i want to say three or four episodes ago when we fought that graph red scion that beat us in the very first episode yeah but now if you wanted to go back to the four belfries towers and use another imbued sword key to open another teleporter we can but we don't need to the other two locations we are gonna get to them even without needing a teleporter anyway uh simply do that get back and then you are now gonna take this ladder down so we're gonna descend there we go and then we're gonna run in here and these crabs are guarding what is a somber smithing stone for something we need to upgrade our special weapons now that's done we shall be uh, going back up climbing back up this a uh, tall-ish, long-ish ladder. I wouldn't consider it a very long ladder like some of the other two ladders that I have clearly commented on how long they are. Anyway, now we're gonna jump. Jump to the other side of the roof and then fight this marionette. And then you're gonna run. Then you're gonna jump and you're gonna go pick up I hear sounds. Alright, these are the abionets. Basically the smaller marionettes that can fly and malfunction just as well. Alright. The abionets are down and then you're gonna go pick this up. I'm gonna pick up the magic Chris. Then I'm gonna jump up, then jump up once more. And then you're gonna do a lot of balancing on this beam. So I'm just gonna light it up so that I don't mess this up. Oh, that actually rhymed. Light it up so that you don't mess it up. Stay tuned for more bars. Anyway, we're gonna pick up uh, the golden rune 3. And then, as you guys can see, there's a nice, nice material on this chandelier. So we're gonna position ourselves correctly on top and then just slowly edge and drop. Pick up another Academy Glinstone key. As you guys can remember, when we went and even fought uh, the Glinstone Dragon Sarag, we got an Academy Glinstone key that allowed us to uh, finally traverse into the Academy of the Alucaria. Now, let me explain something about the keys so the keys are bound to the user so for instance the key which we found next to the glinstone dragon surag once we used it to enter the academy that key is bound to us for eternity or until or at least until the day we die now because dying in this game for us as the player anyway just means we died metaphorically and then we just have to pick up from where we left off so let's put that into mind but basically speaking once a user of a key dies the key is free again so what we found is somebody's old key who is basically not who's basically not alive anymore and that's the key we're gonna be taking all back to tops now tops is the dude who's at the church as you guys can remember 
who told us about the academy and how much he wanted to come back to the academy and all that halabaloo. So we found an extra key. We're going to give him so that he can come back to the academy of Rea Lucaria and I don't know, complete his studies as a sorcerer, I guess. Anyway, we are basically going to the last part of uh, the Academy of Real Lucaria. As I said, it's really short. There's really nothing much for us to do in this academy, to be honest. And then I'm going to pick up the stuff, the glinstone stuff, and just doing one cursory check and there's nothing else left. So we're done. So I'm gonna just uh, go back to you know, the classroom, the debate parlor. And then from here, I shall figure out what I want to do. From here, well, from the debate parlor, there's the only thing left is actually to go fight Renala. But I'm thinking, uh, let's go give Tops the key. Before, like before I deal with Renal, I might as well go give Tops the key. So I'm um, checking my starters. We need like a thousand ish, a thousand five hundred ish more to upgrade. Uh, f from this point on, the Golden Hellbird, if I can find it, is gonna be my weapon of choice. It's gonna work wonders against Renal. You guys are about to see. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna go to Lake Facing Cliffs. This is where Tops Tops is, and I'm gonna give him the. Um, what's it called? I'm gonna give him the uh, Glinstone Academy key so that he can come back to the Academy of Real Lucaria, learn and become a really wonderful sorcerer that can serve as an asset to our serve as an asset to our journey as a tarnished who's looking to is looking forward to becoming the Elden Lord or something. I don't know. Basically speaking, I'm just thinking of how I can take advantage of him because I have done him an unimaginable favor of allowing him the chance to go back to the academy. Anyway, so here he stops. I'm just gonna speak to him. Back to learn another. Wonderful. You're most welcome to any of my anemic little spells. So about Selen? You've taken an apprenticeship with Selen? Yes, I actually well, did. That is something. Selen was well known. The most promising sorceress in the history of the Academy. I followed her at school. But there may as well have been an ocean between us. But Selen was expelled from the Academy. Accused of unthinkable treatment of certain sorcerers. Under the name of the Graven Witch. I still don't believe the accusations. The illustrious Selen would never do such things. She actually did because she confessed it to us. Anyway, let's give him the key. willing to give your glintstone key to me? My, oh my. Thank you. Thank you dearly. Now I can go back to the academy to resume my study of glintstone sorceries. And the very stars. <laughs> I mean, he's so happy, and we get the erudition emotes now. Back to learn another. Why, of course. Thank you dearly. With your blessing, I will depart for the Academy of Rea Lucaria. Oh, perhaps one day you will pay me a visit. Who knows? I may be a decorated sorcerer by then. <laughs> yeah, he actually might be. But yeah, uh, we got the erudition emote, and together with those. Uh, sorcerer's masks that you are picking up it's gonna be the two things combined together that's gonna allow us to uh solve a puzzle that will allow us to get some cool upgrade material as well by upgrade material i mean memory stones but i don't know you can have so many spells that it can help you or be a hindrance it all depends on how you look at it but all that aside, now we want to come back here. You guys remember when I was um, referencing that people were leaving messages? Well, say hello to Thops. He made it back to the Academy of Real Lucaria and sadly he died. He's just sitting there dead. And I mean, we've completed his quest line, but man, it's not the ending you normally expect. But. 
with the sad ending of Thorps out of the way, let's go fight the second demigod of the story, Queen Renala, leader of the Academy of Royal Lucaria and also leader of the royal family of Caria. So, we're gonna talk about Renala a bit. So, for one, she is the head of the entire region of Liania. She controls the entire Liania. Oh God, I hope I hope that I hope the mic is not I hope the mic and the recording is not picking up that chopper. But yeah, she's the head of Liania. That's one. And two, she's. Uh, the demigod as well and she possesses a great, a great rune, the great rune of Rebirth. Now, the great rune of Rebirth was given to her by Radagon who was her husband and together with Radagon she got three kids who I mentioned before, Praetor Rikard, ruler of Mount Gelmir and Volcano Manor, General Radan, ruler of Kaelid and it's not castle Mon redman castle sorry yeah redman castle and luna princess rani the last born and daughter who as i repeat we met in the first episode the chick who wore as a white snow witch with two faces and forms those are her kids and this is where she is after the fall of the academy she was basically barricaded inside this library and she's been here ever since because after her heartbreak she could not go back to her former self. Now, this cutscene is very weird, so I'm just gonna let it play out. Hush, little Calva. I'll soon birth thee anew, a sweeting, fresh and pure. Yeah, so that's Queen Renala. Now this fight is really pointless. It's basically a damage per second um, race. It's basically between me and her and her deformed babies to see who can kill the other faster now what you have to do is you see the babies who have the orbs around them the golden orbs around them we have to boop them and then renala will fall to the ground and then we can boop her and take her down so it's a good hint to figure out where the babies with the orbs are you always see books flying at you, so the direction where the books come from, you should go there. That one of those children is there. And we do the golden vow, and then I'm just gonna do heavy attacks. Okay, we are gonna leave before she blows us up. Now, I'm just gonna look for the rest of them again. I really like the score of this scene though, it's really cool. And I'm just looking for books. Whenever you just see some books flying towards you, that's where the next kid is. Now that that super ability, it was Renala who's firing it. These little kids just fire books towards you. But everything else falling from the sky, that's Renala. Okay, as you guys can see, wherever the book is coming from, that's where your target is. Alright, so that's the third one. I'm gonna get my golden vow ready. And then we're gonna take her out. And we are done. I know it's such a very stupid boss fight, to be honest. Very, very stupid boss fight.
but yeah this is her way way past her prime like it's it's very incomparable my beloved have no fear i will hold thee patience ye will be countless born forever and ever so if you thought that that was the entire boss fight you'd be wrong because there's actually a second phase of the boss fight I love this cut scene it's just amazing. And the majesty of the night she conjures. So basically speaking what's happening is Rani the daughter to Renala is she puts on a spell to protect her mother. And what that spell does is it enchants the real battle form of her mother back to life. So what we are fighting right now isn't the real Renala. We've already fought the real Renala and she's done. The we've beaten her up. So this is just a basically it's how do I put it? this is like an an incantation of Renala's former self in her glory days when she was uh truly amazing in battle. So what I'll be doing now is I've got my golden vow on we are ready we now just have to get to Atsa. There's only one common thing between the enchantment of Renala and her true self that we fought and it's that she has no poise. So heavy attacks are going to be brutal to her. As you guys can see. I've only done two heavy attacks on her and it's done that much damage to her. Oh boy. I mean, look at that. As you can see, even my lowly demi humans can stagger her. But we are done. Anyway, and that's the demi god uh Renala remembrance of the full moon we got and full moon queen and the great throne of the unborn now something about the Karian family the Karian family has a matriarchal system so the same way that kings would leave their uh, kingdoms to their sons the princess and then the prince would become and the new king it's the same with the Karian manor but the Karian family but in the opposite way she's such a weird npc But yeah, so in this uh, lineage, the daughters are the ones who take over the headship of the families. So, is it thy wish to be born anew? So with her, to become a sweeting, reborn of my beloved egg. If you guys heard her in her dying words, she said that she wanted Rani to take over and bring her knight into fruition. So anyway, if we give her a level T as you guys can see, we can change our stats. It our stats go back to the base levels to which we started with and then we can now change a stat if you're not happy with it. More a fear. I would birth thee as a sweeting. Fair and Personally speaking, I'm okay with my stats. As you guys can see, I'm just going through the game so comfortably. I don't care for changing my stats as they are now this chest is locked we are going to get the key for it but way 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 later in the game but yeah so now that we've beaten renala we get two 
great runes we're gonna add a charge to our flask and you're gonna have an h2 allocation which is just fantastic uh, i'm gonna upgrade my strength we're gonna take it to level 26 as it stands now and then we're gonna keep i'm just gonna upgrade it straight up to level 30 so that even without uh utilizing the abilities of a rune arc i can simply use the golden hell but as i please now if you guys can remember um i want to say it's two episodes ago we um was it called we took down a mausoleum and i told you that mausoleums are important in duplicating uh, the remembrance of a boss so what we shall be doing right now is we shall be going to that mausoleum i took down and we shall be duplicating renala's remembrance i do believe renala's remembrance is important for me anyway because uh, she has a staff and that staff is what i'm gonna be using to cast to you i'm gonna use to cast spells I'm not gonna cast spells with it immediately because it has a very steep intelligence requirement. I think it's over 50 if I'm not wrong and that's gonna take a while to get because my intelligence is barely, it's, I think it's at a 21 and that's with the runak. Without the runak I think it's at a 16. So by the time I'm getting 50 plus intelligence yeah it's gonna be a while so this is the mausoleum we took down if you guys can remember two episodes ago and then i'm gonna duplicate the remembrance of the full mo queen of the full moon so we now have two remembrances for uh, renala so I'm, I'm gonna remove this marker that i placed here for telling me that i had left a mausoleum over here because we've already used the mausoleum and a, a mausoleum can only be used once so there's no need for me leaving that marker there anymore now i'm gonna go back to the round table hold you're gonna go speak to the translator of the two fingers and tell the two fingers you got in the second great rune so what do you want and other stories so that's what you're gonna be doing and i'm also gonna go and tell gideon i've gotten two great runes and you have none how about them apples anyway let's talk to her Okay, let's listen to these cross fingers. The greater will is pleased. You have earned the right to become Elden Lord. Now, seek the Erd Tree and an audience with Queen Malika to become Elden Lord and restore the Golden Order. The fingers expect as much from you as they do young Gideon. Take this, a token of farewell. Alright, we get another talisman pouch which is awesome. We now have three. Go forth, become Elden Lord. Alright, so I'm gonna place back our turtle. Uh, talisman to increase our stamina because I had removed it in place of um, the sacrificial twig so that I could not uh, lose my what's it called? I could not lose my runes. Now, the soul seals as you can see they this is the second one which we got at the Faroth um, Fort Faroth and as you can see it really increases a lot of stats. My vigor, my strength, my dexterity but it increases it by some fair distance but at the same time i'm not a big fan of taking more damage for a few stat boosts to be honest it's never been something that i look forward to so i'm honestly not feeling it basically speaking to me i just took it at this point i'm pretty sure i've just taken it so that i can get the platinum achievement i'm probably never gonna use it to be honest
So yeah, I'm just thinking about the correct talismans for us to use. And then you can continue moving forward. So the Crimson Number Medallion restores HP over time, which is actually... Sometimes I think it's a really good uh, talisman to use. Sometimes I think it's pretty... Eh. I mean, it's alright, I guess. Now this one gives us a uh, boosted... It, bo it recovers our health whenever we... Um, whenever we do a critical attack and that could be useful especially if you are fighting a boss fight and we get a critical but yeah I'm gonna put on the turtle one for my stamina recharge and then we're gonna change this one and I'm gonna see which other talisman to use could put this one But there's so many there's so okay i want i don't want to say that there's so many options because even the options i have are not the greatest in the world to be honest but i'm just gonna think about it to see which one is better I don't know, this is so hard. I mean, I'm, I'm also looking at the stats increase. They're really cool. Like, for example, my Viga goes all the way up to 50, which is pretty cool. But at the same time, I'm thinking about the fact that I'm not going to be able to negate any form of damage. It's, it's not something that I really want. Now, this one will raise my maximum HP, which, I mean, I can always get. You know what, I'm going to rock with it. So let's talk to this chick one more time. And then let's talk about Queen... Marika. Queen Marika is the vessel of the Elden Ring, carrier of its vision. A god in truth. But after the Elden Ring's shattering, she was imprisoned in the Erd Tree. A grim punishment for shattering the Order. Despite her godhood, Speak. Malika's trespass demanded a heavy sentence. But even in shackles, she remains a god and a vision's vessel. Confer great rules to become Elden Lord and join Queen Malika as her consort. The Excuse me. Have willed it so. I'm not gonna be someone's third husband. Nah, nah, nah. I'm not gonna be some woman's third husband just because I'm getting Elden Ring. Uh, I'm just because I'm collecting great rooms. It's not gonna go and become somebody's third husband. Yeah, that's not happening. Anyway, we now have two of these remembrances, so we're gonna pick up the Carrion Regal Scepter. This is the basically the sorcerer stuff I'm gonna be using for the entirety of the game. If I can get the stats required for it. But the other one I'm gonna use to give me some more runes. And so we're gonna level up. Take our... Yeah, that's gonna take our strength to 27, which is pretty cool. And now let's go tell Gideon that even though a lot of expected from him. I am the one who actually has any tangi tangible progress. See what he has to say for himself. Hello, well, Gideon. I see you found another great room. Wonderful. You are a worthy fellow tarnished indeed. Make the journey. To the capital, Landell, that lies to the east of the Altus Plateau, at the foot of the Erd Tree. The Two Fingers will deny your passage no longer. You may be our best hope. Find your way to the Elden Ring, for we are tarnished. And we must answer the call of grace. Okay. Let's talk about Renala. Queen of the Carian Royals, 
who govern the Academy, and her great room dwells within the egg she so dearly clutches. Alright, and what about Radan? Because that's gonna be the next demigod we go for. General Radan, the famed Red Lion and Scourge of the Stars, is a ferocious warrior. He fought Melania and her rot to a standstill in the Kaelid wilds to Limgrave's east. And now Kaelid has been engulfed by the Scarlet Rot. Even approaching the region is no mean feat. I've heard survivors of Radan's army are still in the wilds, staving off the rot with fire. And if it's true, I suspect Radan is still there as well, in Kaelid. Though, I doubt he much resembles his former self anymore. Alright, that is more than enough. So we have done everything that we wanted to do in this episode. We have finished the Academy of Real Lucaria and we have even fought the demigod uh, Queen Renala, Queen Renala Queen of the Full Moon. So in the next episode we shall continue on from here on. We shall be heading up north. We, sh we won't go to the Altas Plateau as we've been instructed, but we shall be going to the Carian Manor as well so that we can finally uh, so that we can finally uh, get the Sword of Night and Flame and as well as get a lot of things done. So I'm just checking out my stats. I'm going to be finishing up on the strength and then I'm going to do intelligence and faith at the same time. And then once we are done, I shall pump everything into vigor religiously. No, wait, I'm going to put faith and intelligence to 25, uh, mind to 25 and then vigor religiously all the way to level 60. Anyway. With that being said, I'm going to end this episode right here. So it's been fun. It's been nice. But we are going to meet in the next one. So stay safe. Be smart. Be kind. Tell somebody you love them today. And I shall catch all of you in the next episode. Bye, guys. Oh, man.